notice something. Speaking in tongues is to God. First Corinthians 14 2. Speaking in tongues is to God. Now when you interpret it, that means that which you said to God in prayer and in praise. You can now say it to the church. And of course, when you interpret tongues, even your mind is now informed. Because when you were speaking, your mind was, was also in the school of the unlearned. But when you now receive understanding, you educate your mind. So you can also interpret what you said to your mind. We said a few days ago that if you can speak in tongues, you can also interpret it. It's the same spirit, right? The same spirit speaking is the same spirit interpreting. You don't write out tongues because your mind does not understand what you're speaking. And for you to write something, your mind must understand it. Your mind doesn't understand tongues, so you don't write tongues. They have no vocabulary. It's not like karatama. You, you put K-A-R-A-T-A-M-A. -A karatama. That's carnality. Karatama is not K-A. It is Karatama. I'm teaching good, right? You can't write tongues, but you can write the interpretation. Let's practice it in a moment. Open your eyes. Look at me. Don't close your eyes. Are you ready for practice? Get a piece of paper. You have a piece of paper? Get a pen. You have a pen? Look at me, everybody. Speak in tongues. As loud as you can. You don't need to stand up. Sit down. Speak in tongues. Legro do zoko la baraka tone keliana jajo koloto bezeya na hata egebo jaka alamo sokile neme agabaro nemo sota agala na membra nangra agale de bobo joko lo dobrona la koroto sikele ne mama agebo jaka and as you're speaking the moment you have you have interpretation write it down on your paper the moment you have interpretation write it down on your paper egemo sataya agale ne mosha angele ne egele ne mombro Gada sakaya, ege botoli anana, ago sekila na, ago sekila, agarano kila na mo shakayana, 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 e ano ne ano ziki ananga, ele ni ano ta kala no melere ni kaso kali anango loto zikiya, breano sekia tatali tataya, aga bozokiya. Jacoya ne mea, nagoro taseke, lagora naketana, naketana. Age anamajo kolo da boze kele rebrina lebro agarato 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 ayano de siki alataba hata. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You write down the interpretation. You write down the interpretation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead and write down. It could be short. It could be long sentences. But there's surely an interpretation. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You can wait a bit. If it's not coming, speak again until you have that interpretation there. Thank you, Lord. Remember, interpretation is to give meaning to. And it could be phrases, it could be long sentences, it could be instruction. This includes the online, this includes those on television, this includes everybody in the campuses. Or it can carry an information or a prediction. Now notice, you know it could have been a bit more if you didn't write it down. If I didn't ask you to stop and write down, if you were speaking the interpretation, you will have said much more. Because it is an utterance gift. The more you have the opportunity to speak, the more you are able to, to bring interpretation. It's an utterance gift. So if I had allowed you to keep speaking, as you keep speaking, you will have been having a lot more of interpretation. But because we, you had to stop for me to keep teaching, you had some interpretation. I, I don't know if you are with me here. And some of you, the interpretation you could be having may be for everybody in this church. And for some of you, could be for somebody on your seat. Some of you could be for yourself. But there is an interpretation. And the interpretation is for the good of all. Am I teaching good? 
Stay with me. This is how to grow spiritually. You take time and learn. And you take time and practice. You practice until you are perfected. It's part of training. That's the job of the local church. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. I said amen. And we will do a lot of practicals within this week. I will be teaching. I will be doing practicals. Because when it comes to utterance gifts, a key word is desire. 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 Let there be a hunger in you. When you see somebody suddenly want to tell desire to want to tell him something to make his life better. Let there be such a longing in you so that when you see people, out of that desire comes utterance. Desire. Want to want to have it as a longing and a desire covet it how you covet something you know covetousness is a sin but when it comes to the gifts of the spirit you are permitted to covet covet it so that when you meet people you can supply say with me i have the supply of the spirit say it again i have the supply of the spirit so you have it you are not denied that supply the supply is inside you. Covet. Desire. Glory to God. Desire. Desire. First Corinthians chapter, chapter, I mean, yeah, first Corinthians 12 31. Look at Brother Paul's instructions. 12 31. First Corinthians 12 31. First Corinthians, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent word. Covet earnestly. Don't just covet. Covet earnestly. He calls it the best gift. Look at First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse one. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse one. Full after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy, that you may prophesy. Rather that you may prophesy. First Corinthians fourteen, twelve. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Even so, ye for as much as your zealous of spiritual gifts. Seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Seek that you may excel. So, best gifts that you may prophesy. Seek to excel. Brother Paul gives these instructions for those who will want to. Why you don't prophesy often is not a question of ability. It's not that you don't have ability. It's a question of activity. You are not practicing. The only reason why you don't prophesy often is not because you don't have the ability. It's because you are not practicing. You are not actively involved in the things of the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4. 14 4. But he that prophesied edified the church. He that speaketh in tongues edified himself. What's prophecy again? Tongues plus interpretation. Look at verse 5. First Corinthians 14 verse 5. I would that you all speak with tongues. But rather that you prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues. Except he interpret that the church may receive a divine. When he say greater is he, he's not saying that prophecy is better than tongues. He's saying in a church service, prophecy is more beneficial than tongues. Because prophecy will edify us, tongues will edify you. That's what brother Paul is talking about. Look at that 1 Corinthians 14, 14 again. 14 verse 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue or in tongues, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Next verse. What is it then? I will pray with, with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. And I will sing with the understanding. So, you interpret your tongues to be a blessing to the church. However, you also interpret your tongues for your mind to understand what you are saying in prayer and praise. The moment tongues are interpreted for others to hear, it becomes prophecy. So, that means tongues is potential prophecy. Tongue is potential prophecy. Speaking in tongues is potential prophesying. But it can only become prophecy when I interpret it. In other words, 
every time I am speaking in tongues, I have a potential to prophesy. I also have a potential to bless others. I have potentials to carry information that can give people direction or edification.